Welcome back, everybody. Boy, did we have some controversy over that last video. My email box blew up. Say no to cellular data tracking. So let's talk about these third-party units because we really can't talk about how to get rid of tracking if we don't understand the units. You see, you have a choice. Unlike your big box store, which has these type of units, okay, everybody just thinks that they're internet boxes, but they truly are a modem. Yes, they do Wi-Fi, but they're still a modem. Some of the pros to this thing that we really should understand why we would want to go this route versus the big box store units, all cellular modems have GPS in them from the providers. It's called tracking. That's just part of it. We're going to eliminate that because this does not have tracking. Here's another third party unit. This one works outside, so it can sit outside. And actually, if you got a metal building, uh, like a uh, uh, barn dominium, you would need something like this, or you would have to go with something like this and put an external antenna. You see, a barn dominium is all steel. And the one thing that cellular waves get screwed up over it is metal. It can't penetrate through. If you don't believe me, go into a big box stores or all metal buildings. What happens to your cell phone when you walk in there? You lose all your signal. Can't be done. You have to go back up by the door, get some signal, find what you want, and then you can go back in the store. So that's one of the reasons why you would want something like these third-party units, because we got external antennas. I'm not saying you can't use external antennas on these type of devices, but uh, you better be very comfortable with tearing them apart. I'm not even comfortable. I don't even want to go down that road. That's a rabbit hole I don't want to go down. This costs the exact same as you going in the store and purchasing one of these boxes, okay? One of these cellular boxes, whether you did AT&T, T-Mobile, Verizon, or maybe you went into the Metro store. Uh, uh, you can do that as well. But those cards even work in here. One of the strong points to these units is I can hook up external antennas to this. What I can do is take these off. I can hook on antennas like this one here that you see outside my house, which is pointing to my tower. You would think because that tower is so close, this would work. The problem is, is my antennas on my tower are because of the way they're turned up and when the when the, it shoots out the uh, uh, waves, the cellular waves, my house is here, my tower is there. It literally blasts right across the house, and I don't get no, <laughs> no, I get service, but it's pretty limited. And I'm directly, basically, I'm directly under the tower. Okay, you can be too close, <laughs> and that will affect you. So I went with an external antenna since I had this thing. Uh, uh, which happens to be the waveform, that thing will go up to probably pretty close to 10 miles, I think even maybe a little over 10 miles from a cellular uh, um, tower. So I love it for that. And what I'm using it to do now is a little way, over, no, it's way overkill because you technically only need to use a dipole antenna like what you see here, which is called an omnidirectional. It's on the back of my camper. That's what I use when we're rolling down the road. Yep, you heard me right. You can use these units even going down the highway, unlike a lot of your provider units. Because what? They don't want you using it going down the road. You go get one of their home units and go down the highway with it. Yeah, we could do that initially, but look at what T-Mobile just has done. So they don't want to. Now they can track you. You do it, they'll shut you down real quick and simple. One of the other big benefits to these units is like this one here, and I do not recommend this unit, and I'll tell everybody in a minute, do not go with MoFi. MoFi has a wonderful interface in it, but the stability is not there. I even went in and updated the modem in here trying to help. And yeah, it did make an improvement, but I was not pleased with it whatsoever. Uh, this Pro Next that I got right in front of me that I've been pointing to and talking to, will smoke this thing as far as uh, uh, efficiencies and latencies and internet stability. But one of the things that's in this particular modem that is coming in these other modems is the ability to run dual SIMS cards, strong point. 
You can't run dual SIMS cards in, in your cell provider's modems. If you're like me and you have two, I have AT or Verizon and T-Mobile. So I have both of them running at all times. It's just, I need, I need redundancy. I need to know my internet's not going down because that's really how I work. Otherwise, I have to go to an office, and I just don't want to do that. So that's a big asset to these is if you're mobile and you want the ability to have redundancy and not have the issues is go with a dual SIM unit. Uh, they will be coming out over at Haven Wireless Technologies. Haven Wireless Technologies will be receiving them. Rather he's getting them for his next pro units like this unit here or rather he's getting them for what I call the internet modem on steroids, the Invisigate, which is unbelievable. Okay. If you by chance have a pole barn and you need it and you want to do it the cheaper way versus putting an external antenna on it, Haven Technology has a new unit over there. Uh, very much works the same way as this one here. This one is the 520, which is running the X65 chip. This one here also has the X65 chip in it. If you're going to purchase these things, I highly recommend going with the X65 chip. And the question is why? And it really comes down to the latency and the quality of internet that you receive with the X65 chip versus the X62. If you go look at Amazon right now and you search up cellular modems, you're going to see all kinds, whether they're types that plug into your laptops, types that run outside like this, and even units like this. But they all say X62, not X65. This thing will smoke an X62 unit. This thing, that's probably why this thing smokes this MoFi unit. You even go to MoFi's website and you search for X65, it's not there. So far, Haven Technologies and Chester Tech Repair are the two that are running the X65 uh, uh, modems. They're staying ahead of the game. Mobility. What's nice about this, like me, I take these things off when I hit the RV and we're heading down south. These all come off even at home. Like I said, I have an outside antenna. I had these on here just so you could see they do come with them. I take them off and like you see right here right now, there are four connectors on the back. Uh, they call it a four by. There's actually four antennas in these boxes like you see right here. That allows for the best reception, okay, that you can get in simple terms. I'm not going to get all geeky in this stuff. I'm going to try to keep it as simple as I can. So I actually mount this. There's hooks on here so you can hang it on a wall. It hangs in a cabinet and then my antennas, which are up on top of the roof, hook up to this. So that way when I'm rolling down the highway, I could, if my wife is driving, I'm on my laptop and I'm doing my work or, what, or vice versa. If we're traveling and she has to work, she can work while we're rolling down the highway. I would say 99% of, no, let's just be realistic. 90% of the places we go, I have internet from the time I leave here to the time I get back. Now I may not, I may lose uh, T-Mobile at times, then I throw the Verizon SIMS card in. So it, it's kind of, mm, it's a wash which card we use. That's one of the nice features that are coming from Haven Technology is the ability to have dual SIMs in these things. We lose T-Mobile and you got Verizon, it just kicks over. Redundancy is a beautiful thing. Selecting your provider's towers. You can't do that with these units, okay? I have three towers sitting, one over here, one over there, and I actually have one downtown. I have three towers probably within three miles of me. The closest one is right over here, which I'm underneath. Most of the time, I, if I don't select that tower, it'll pick up the one downtown, which does not have 5G. Only this one here has 5G. So, and really, I can honestly tell you 4G is just as good as 5G, if not better.
Okay, it's growing, it's getting there, but it isn't there quite yet. Locking onto towers. Why is that so critical? Is because I can focus on the best channels for my internet. You see? It might be channel, oh heck, I don't know, 71, which is 5G. You got 25, which is a 5G. Maybe you don't have those and or you, it's weak, and so it bounces back and forth. If it bounces back and forth, you lose your signal quality, and you don't want that. So you're better off locking on to a band. That's the beautiful thing about these units, and I'm going to show you that here in just a second. So then what we do is now that we're locked onto the tower, we're locked onto the uh, uh, band that we like, we score, you see? So that it eliminates the issue with the signal quality fluctuating. Huge benefit to these things. I can make your provider think you're on a cell phone when reality is you're on this box. So you may have unlimited data on your cell phone. But as you know, if you use a hotspot, what happens? You get throttled. So how do we get around this? And this will go for any provider. Now you can go get a home card from a, a, a data card from T-Mobile today, okay, for this box. You can go get a card, plug it in here, it's going to work. As soon as you buy that data plan, because you told them you're using it at your residence. If you leave, they shut you down, you see? But if you buy a data card with unlimited data for a phone, for a tablet, for a hotspot, they all have addresses, independent addresses is what I'm gonna call them. It identifies that particular unit. You take that address and you apply it to this. Then you turn that device off. You turn this device on. You reconnect to the internet. Right now the manufacturer thinks you're on your cell phone when reality is you're on a third party unit. You see? When you're searching the web, you're working on the web, it's unlimited. That's the agreement you have. Now once you hit uh, uh, so many gig, It'll start throttling you. That's what they tell you. The other way to get around this is we're going to go inside the unit here now, and I'm going to show you is the interface. Not very difficult. We just have a couple things we need to change in order to make these work the way we want them to. So hold on and follow me. Let's go over and take a look at that. And let's try easy. See if that worked. Bingo! All right, now that we got into the interface, you can see it says we're running 5G. Let me make sure network mode is set correctly. Yep. All right. And of course, my address is here, and I'm going to have to hide this. So I'm going to do screenshots. Go away. I'm going to do screenshots of every page. That way I can cover up my address right here. Okay? because there's crazy people on the internet that like to steal your information. In order to set this thing up and finish it, we need the address off of there. That is this number right here. And most of the time you can turn the device over, turn your uh, uh, phone over, and you'll see that nut right there with a series of numbers like this. Now I'm going to X all mine out. But we need to write that down because we have to enter it in here. In order to enter it in here, you're going to go down to AT commands right here. Under the AT commands, look at that. Here's where you're going to put it in. You enter that number in here, XX whatever it is. It's a 15 digit code. Put that all in here and then hit edit. That now changes that device. When you do that, you better have this phone shut off. You do not want to run two devices with the same address. It can throw red flags and possibly get you shut down. So don't do that. If you have an old phone or uh, an old Android phone or an old iPhone around, get the uh, uh, that number, the address off the back of the phone, one you're not using. Why not use it that way? Once you plug that card into it, you're going to need to come in and set 
the TT, whoop, yeah, the TTL settings in here. You're going to want to set that to 64 and turn on enable TTL. If you don't turn on any, the, you don't enable that, it's going to use the cell phone provider's uh, uh, settings, which aren't the smartest thing to do if you want to be unlimited, truly unlimited data. Changing that changes the way, basically the way the packages are bouncing back and forth and it's confusing to their systems. Someday they're going to fix that problem, but for now they have not. Then we also need to go in now because we are a new car and this is a card and when this is our new device, we need to go into the APN settings right here. I'm going to assume, because that's what I have on this one, we're going to assume that you went with T-Mobile or Metro. I think Metro is the uh, secondary to T-Mobile. You're going to name it whatever you want to name it, Metro, T-Mobile. Your APN, I believe, is going to be fast.tmobile.com. The rest of the fields will remain empty. I will have a link down below uh, for these APN settings that will be required. Once we have that entered in here, you're going to hit save. Come on, get out of here. I don't want that for me. Uh, you want to set your IP type. You, you can try. Well, technically, you should be right there anyway. Hit that save. It should be set to IPv6 and IPv4. You can check your status and make sure. See, right now it says cable unplugged. I may have to reboot because I just did that. We'll give it a minute see if it comes back. Oh, it's offline. <laughs> steve has got to reboot the system. Oh, it just popped back up. Aren't we so lucky? Look at that uh, AP command again. Let's make sure it's all in act activated correctly. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, down here. <laughs> yep, okay. And again, you see my, I am, there's my address right here, and I got to exit all those out. So you'll get screenshots of that stuff because I have to edit it. Okay, so now that we're all set up, units working, we entered our address, we set up our APNs, and we set our, uh, uh, AT or our TTL command right here to 64, we're good to go. Now that we did all of this, if you found this interesting, you want to understand more between a true modem versus home internet systems versus commercial units and versus what I call T-Mobile on hotspots or T-Mobile on steroids, what the heck was that? Um, I'll put a link down below. That's my other video that caused all the controversy that blew up my email box that made me redo this video. Warning. When we get to the T-Mobile box, you're going to get warning signs. And it doesn't do it once. I did it like four different times through the video where I brought this warning up. Please tell me. You could tell me how annoying that was at the bottom, and I don't blame you. But overall, there's still good information in there that is very beneficial to you and very helpful to you. With that said, you guys have a fantastic evening. God bless you all. Till next time. See you soon. Bye now.